fuel is the absolute enemy of your engine. I know that sounds crazy, doesn't it, Jeremy? It does. So we're here at Waggler Competition. This is Jeremy Waggler. And how much power does this crazy engine make? 3,000 horsepower in a drag vehicle. Just 3,000 horsepower in a diesel, and that's a yep. that's a butt ton of torque is what that is. Yep. That's a Just technical a little term, Cummins. right? Just a little Cummins. Just a little Cummins, yep. right? One of the things that I've heard and I want you to verify, because I rant about surface finish all the time and how important surface finish is. And you might be wondering, what does that have to do with fuel? Hang on, we're gonna tell you that these engines, when you first started doing them, they could barely make, what, three or four passes down the track and they were already starting to... We would have customers calling back. Uh, this particular one was Ben Shaddy in a Corvette. He would start telling me like, hey, I'm already seeing slow by pressure. He had a pressure sensor on the valve cover, so he would detect when it started building crankcase pressure, and it was within three to four passes. So it would rings would seal, and then they would start to lose pressure. I know from talking to Keith at our place, I mean, we tried every different material possible, and it didn't matter what material ring we put in, it really didn't move the needle that much. Didn't change anything until we started playing with the honing. Followed you guys' guidelines, and here we are running 30, 40 passes before we need to do anything on the rings. We really literally went from this, destroyed, beat up, to this looks almost look brand, brand new, new. Yes. just by changing hone. And also you were managing the fuel. Because if I look at these pistons, I see the, the difference in the bowl. The bowls, yep. We worked with Ross pistons on the bowls, but you, as you can see, the basic spray pattern of this engine was mm -hmm. like a 155, 160 degree spray pattern and we're, we're spraying flat. So the flatter you spray, the more chance you're going to be to shooting over the top of the piston when it's coming up to top dead center. The biggest thing is, as a diesel, most of the guys, we've all went to valve relief because we're putting big cams in them, right. all this and that. Basically, we went back, moved the piston all the way up to the very top again, just sunk the valves in the head and done a relief in the head itself for the valves instead of doing it in the piston. And therefore we're keeping that diesel fuel off of the cylinder wall right. and not working around and getting inside the ring packs. Because fuel is the enemy of your engine. You need that fuel to make power. But the problem it's, is that unburnt fuel that never burns does two things. One, it washes the oil off the cylinder wall. Yep. And the oil is the lubricant and the seal. I always say oil is the gasket, right? Yeah, yep. You're gonna have more skirt damage yep. if you don't have the proper amount of oil on the cylinder wall. Well, by changing the hone, you are able to hold more oil on the cylinder wall, which is gonna give That's, you lubrication and seal. Yep. But then when you change the bowl and the piston design, you are also mechanically keeping more fuel from getting on the wall. Around the sides, and we're talking here, even on the uh, gas porting, mm -hmm. we was working with Ross on gas porting these pistons, and we also started seeing the gas porting was actually causing us more issue with that. It fuel became getting, a place for the oil, to, or the fuel to stay. It's going up, scraping the fuel and the oil back off, feeding it into the gas port, and then burning. When it ignites, it's actually burning the ring itself. So you'll start seeing the little little areas right around the gas port where it just starts to burn. Gas ports are fine for gasoline, not so much for diesel. Not as much from what we've seen. In yeah. our example, like you know, like I said, this is a common rail. I know mechanical guys. A lot of guys like gas porting. Different different mm -hmm. applications like different things. But for high boost, high high performance common rail stuff, we've seen it not being very well. So talk about that. The difference between a common rail piece and a mechanical injection type piece. What, what's the real difference there in terms of fuel delivery? Uh, fuel delivery is basically you're putting this in with electronic injectors so you can advance timing, retard timing a lot more than mm -hmm. what you can mechanical and your mechanical is actually putting that shot in when it does the pop it in the injector, right. it's dumping all the fuel. So with a mechanical, you're getting that load of fuel. Normally the orifice sizes in the nozzles are a lot larger on this type okay. of power level because these common rails, you're actually able to put a small shot of fuel in, like a pilot, and then a main burst of fuel in. So you, you're able to control that injector a lot more than a mechanical. Not that saying makes that, sense. Not saying that one's better than the other because mechanical is making tons of power with theirs. The common rail, you can just burn cleaner. You can burn cleaner with right. a common rail than a mechanical normally. And uh, again, mechanical pistons, I believe they stay cooler. When you take a, a Ross piston out of a 
common rail piston is normally changing, as you can see, like mm -hmm. changing, it burns the anodize off of it and it changes colors on a mechanical. It's normally black and it doesn't look like it has any heat. So right. that load of fuel. More is, fuel in a shorter window. It's also mechanical. going out the stack, right. but it's keeping the piston cool. Right, so absolutely. Little yeah. differences. That makes sense why, why the gas port would probably work better on a mechanical because mm -hmm. it's, it's actually allowing that the cylinder pressure to actually activate the ring, yeah. and then and you're then getting this one small load. glass of fuel, yeah. but where this is, you're getting fuel, 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 fuel. It's, it's yeah, actually burn. time for it yeah. to actually get yeah. caught in there. It makes sense that with that mechanical, you're getting that one big the burst shot, of fuel. Shot of fuel, right. and, and normally, like I was saying, different angles and larger ports, uh, like your orifice size in your mm -hmm. injector nozzle is larger on a mechanical than a, a common rail. Right, that makes total sense. So. Yeah. That goes back to say, fuel is, when enemy. is enemies, yeah. right? You have to manage the fuel, Probably and just not. pouring more fuel to it can mean more power, but you have to manage that fuel. Yep. A lot of times it's power management, as just as you're going down the track and all that, it's it's power management, same thing with, with cylinder walls. So the more we learn, the better we are, right? Absolutely. Well, back to the injector part is because liquid fuel is what the enemy is. It's yep. not... Fuel, once it's vaporized, is not the enemy anymore. Yep. It's actually what the engine's burning. Yep. Engines don't burn liquid fuel. The it's black amazing. smoke is the unburnt, unburnt fuel, fuel that yep. never vaporized, so it couldn't burn. And these engines, they seem to love nitrous. They're injecting nitrous to help burn mm -hmm. the fuel. It's a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. The pistons don't have any real black, like they're not coated with soot or anything like right. that. The nitrous is actually making that burn happen in the cylinder and it's clean out the stack as well. So it's an accelerant too. So yes, I, yes. I'm sure in a diesel environment, that's what it's, it's actually doing. Yeah. It's speeding up the burn rate. So you're getting a more complete combustion, which is going to make more power. Oh yeah. But different class rules and all that, but normally drag racers use nitrous. Pullers do not use nitrous, so. Is that build. because the pullers are starting with that thing so heavily loaded? I mean, I always hear pulling it's, is actually harder on the engine oh, it's than drag far. racing. When these engines in a drag car, like this one's been four, mm -hmm. four uh, teens, so four seconds, in a pulling application, the same power level, you have to make that engine live for 13 to 15 seconds. Ooh. So under full load, big difference between pulling and drag racing. Yeah. Drag racing engines are a little more forgiving if you have a little tune-up issue, mm -hmm. where a pulling, if you have an issue, it's gonna tell you by the end of that 300 some feet. <laughs> so, a lot of difference there. Yeah, well the thing about it, it's almost triple the amount of time. Yeah, right? yeah. at least, so, yeah. at least, yep. A, a season of pullings, way more work a lot on of the engine. Trying and to then pull. you see crazy things like this. What's the story on this? Cause this is nuts. So this one actually came out of Ben's car. Uh, okay. So basically, Head gasket, uh, this actually happened at Indy track, UCC of 2021. All uh, right. But firing failed. Uh, it used to be a, a ring. It used to be a ring. Uh, it actually wrapped around the head gasket. So that blew, blew out a copper head gasket. Copper head gasket, a steel a ring. Fi fire, steel fire ring. And then basically it took a chunk of this gasket and shot it through the front of the car out the fiberglass front clip and broke the wrist pin in half. This is going down track. This isn't, I've never seen a That's wrist a pin trend tool break. steel. Tool steel. Yeah, extreme duty. Yeah. You grabbed the rod there, but the rod actually survived. It needed a bushing, so we just decided we better put a new rod yeah, in. Yeah, the rod looks actually pretty it's great. Brand new. The bearing even looked brand new. So yeah. it just took it, sheared, sheared this, and all that happened within a split second because it overheated the nozzle on the injector. It ballooned it and dumped Diesel fuel. Again, fuel is your enemy. Right, yeah. So <laughs> in this case, you basically hydro locked yeah, it. Yeah, hydro locked it, pushed pushed the gasket, so it relieved it there and relieved it there. So which means that that piston, that piston bent like a banana, actually. Yes. Which and you don't think pistons could bend, especially those giant pistons, how yeah. that could actually bend. But, but it bent flat. enough that with this rod, it bent it over and broke that. First time we've seen it happen. I'm I've sure, never seen yeah, something like that say, happen I'm before. I'm sure someone else has, but that's an extreme duty pin. We was highly impressed. The rod is not bent no, or anything. No, it's it just, it, And the bushing's not terrible. It just scored it whenever yeah. it did that. Right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Long story short, a lot of fuel in a real quick bang, and it, it needed somewhere to go. So it found the <laughs> weak link and, and several weak links. But again, 
things we learn, things we find, working with fuel companies, trying to trying to get everything to work together at that kind of high RPMs. Mm-hmm. You know, diesel wasn't meant to run 6,000, 7,000 RPMs. They are now. So back in the, when they invented common rail, I'm sure it didn't want to go over 3,000 RPMs. So right, yeah. that was a lot of RPMs for yeah, a diesel, yeah. yeah. So now we're at six and 7,000 RPMs. What the next 10 years will bring, it's hard to say. Electronics are getting faster. Fuel injection companies are getting injectors to fire faster. So all we have to do is keep maintaining the engine. And with you guys, we have a good ring pack. You guys helped us out on telling us what we needed to hone it. We honed it and everything's working great. And the homes really changed a lot. That, that's oh, yeah. probably the, one of the biggest stories here is that, do you remember the numbers of where you were in terms of like the valley depth and stuff been, from where you were to where you are now? Yeah, I think it was, uh, I'd had to check on our sheet, but like 15 to 20s. On the before, RA, right? On the RA before, and then we're up to, I think, 70s now, I believe. Is that correct? Probably I'd have to right. check, yeah. I know, I know uh, what you're saying. Like these, the, like, the, the valleys are now, these things are probably around like, 80 yes, on the RVK. 80 on these, yes. So when you were at about a 15 RA, you were probably around like a 30 or a 40 valley. So you've doubled I'm the amount it was of valley low, yeah. at least. I'm thinking, uh, the, and I'll grab the sheet, RVK was down in the 15 to 20 range. So it was smooth. It Ooh, was smooth. Way smooth. And then we kept getting rougher, rougher, rougher. Ordered some new diamonds from Sun and got that to go on up to the 80 range now. And it's working good for this application. Yeah. So. And you guys are seeing some guys needing to go greater than that. We've got guys going up to 140 yep. on the RVK when they're running the compound you know, boosted applications. So who would have ever thought that five years ago? No, nobody. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember when this stuff all came up and we were sitting there all scratching our heads. And we're like, well, only thing I can think of, we need to probably, we need to hold more oil. So oil what can retention. we do? Right. Yeah. So we need, because there's, there, we're, there's so much fuel. Yep. washing all the oil away the only chance we have is to hold more oil yep. so that's where we started working with the guys at rottler and they were really great about saying hey here, here try this diamond and ed right. keebler at rottler was great about He's, figuring out yep. how to create a honing process that could hold more oil without it just being a rougher cylinder that yeah. just wore everything out so that extreme plateau that we've been talking about in many videos I mean, it works in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It works in NHRA Pro Stock. It works in NASCAR. It, basically, it works in any engine that when you add that valley, but still keep it flat on the top. So it's not wearing the rings it's out. It's not wearing the rings out. Yep. It's got a place to seal, but it has that valley for oil retention. Everything just gets better. Yep. Vacuum gets better. I'm glad you're doing seminars and stuff on this because we get that phone call all the time that's too rough you'll never get the rings to seal and we have to explain to customers all the time like this is different than what you're used to on your gasoline engine right with no boost this is completely a different scenario but it does work just trust us it works right and then we send them to keith if they have any questions and he takes <laughs> care of them so but yeah it, it's def- we've learned a lot in the last couple of years and and i always say I, I think we'll learn more in the next five years we so. will continue to learn because yep. the material advances as you make more power yep. we're going to continue to work on materials and coatings yep. and all of that will evolve of what that hone can be should be to maintain that higher level of power. Yes, yep. All we can do is keep on working, right? So we do, we keep working, keep improving, (laughs) and we share it with you, which is why we make videos like this.